And uh, if you would, just uh, join with me in welcoming Bob Smiley. Yeah, don't fall. Man, thank you guys for coming out. Uh, it's an honor to meet you. Like, yeah, anyway, I don't want to make you embarrassed, but man, I love this guy. I barely even know him, and I don't even think of you as a friend. I think you more of as a great-great-grandfather. Um, <laughs> And that's why I don't get invited back anywhere. <laughs> um, no, it's great to be here. I, I love this. Uh, for those of you who don't know a lot about me, I live in northern Mexico, <laughs> a place called Houston, Texas. And, um, and I love doing comedy. I've, uh, I've been doing it for 16 years. I get to travel. I get to meet people. I've even uh, done comedy in third world countries. I've been to El Salvador, Guatemala, <laughs> Arkansas. Um, <laughs> yeah. Don't leave just because I <laughs> It's okay. I know Matlock is on. He's probably leaving to go take that. Um, so. <laughs> no, it is. It's so great. I love, I mean, laughter. God created laughter. It's an amazing gift. We, um, yeah, he really did. Like, I actually, I learned that uh, this morning. There was a thing in the in-flight magazine. I, I flew from uh, Houston this morning. I left at uh, 5.15. I got on this plane, and it was when this little small, I don't even know the airline. I think it was called Kanye West. And, um... <laughs> I don't even remember what the airline was. Uh, I do know the plane did take off, so I know it wasn't American Airlines. Uh, <laughs> oh, you think that's a joke because I'm a comedian. Okay, I get it. No, that's not a joke. I have a neighbor that has a dog that kept running away. He renamed it American Airlines. It hadn't gone anywhere since, so... <laughs> <laughs> I love seeing people look around to see if I'm offending anybody. <laughs> like, trust me, I'm not going to offend anybody. If somebody works for American Airlines and they're coming to my show tonight, <laughs> they're still sitting in their driveway. So, <laughs> I got on this plane. <laughs> what are you doing, laps? What is going on here? <laughs> you couldn't exercise earlier? <laughs> Oh, you, oh, that was good. All right. Um, yeah. Why go two feet? Um, <laughs> you probably used to work for the government. Um, <laughs> I know he doesn't work for him now, or he would have stopped halfway and not done anything. Um, <laughs> So no, I don't even remember what I was talking about. But I do. Comedy is an amazing thing. Uh, before I, when I was little, before I wanted to be a comedian, I wanted to be a major league baseball player. And then I realized <laughs> that's never going to happen because I'm afraid of needles. So, <clears throat> wow, sports crowd. Okay. <laughs> All right, this isn't part of my act, but I just thought it was funny. For Halloween last year, I dressed as Tony Romo, and when the kids knocked on the door, I opened the door and I threw the candy to the wrong kids. So, <laughs> okay, most of you enjoyed that. Some of you were like, oh, like, okay. And I, I'm not going to call you out, but I'm interested. Were you upset because you're a Tony Romo fan, or is it because I'm a Christian talking about Halloween? Huh? Because... <laughs> Let's be honest, that is a hot topic among Christians. Some people are against Halloween that are Christian. I'm going to be honest, and you know, that's what made me think about the whole government thing. Was I, I love Halloween because that is the best way to teach my kids about the IRS. I let them go get the candy, and when they come home, I take 50% of it. <laughs> this year, I'm taking 60. So, they're going to be okay. I'm going to give them free health care. So... telling you because this happened this is not a bit this actually happened i got on the plane it was early it was 5 15 in the morning i sat down the, the seat and this little kid peeked up behind me like a little three-year-old and wasn't behind me he was in front he was the seat back behind and he just peeked up and he goes hee hee right yeah and i love kids so i was like hee hee um <laughs> it was so precious but if, if you're ever in that situation don't go hee hee trust me what you should do is <laughs> stab him in the eye <laughs> I'd never played the hee hee game because I didn't know the rules, but every 10 seconds the kid's like, hee hee, I'm like, hee hee, hee hee, anybody want to play? Hee hee, okay, how long does this go? Hee hee, okay, what's his mother doing? Yes, she's still drinking, hee hee, hee hee. Like, finally, he went, I didn't know what to do, it was so early, and the plane hadn't even taken off yet. He was like, hee hee, I was like, ha ha. <laughs> game over, I won. And... 
You know what you get if you win? You get a new seat on the plane. Um, <laughs> the flight attendant came and moved me up uh, to the bulkhead, and he was real mad, and he was doing his announcements right next to me, and it was awkward because he was this, like, angry, he was like a three-foot male flight attendant, like, fresh out of the Shire. And um, <clears throat> he was an angry hobbit, and... Um, <laughs> He was staring at me the whole time he was making his announcements. And I'm kind of glad because, I mean, I've been flying for 16 years. I've never listened to the announcements until this morning. But there's two announcements I can't believe they make. One, they say in the event of a water crash landing, you can use your seat cushion as a flotation device. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, but if I'm ever in a really scary crash, the seat cushion I was just sitting on... <laughs> that thing anywhere near me, right? The other one is more dangerous. I thought when oxygen mass falls, the oxygen starts flowing, right? But no, you have to listen, but they say to start the flow of oxygen, tug lightly on the tube. Well, let's rethink this. Who's going to be going 10,000 miles an hour in a mountain going, ah, hee hee. So we took off this morning. This is what I was talking about. This is why I, I told you the story. But in the in-flight magazine, they had all these rare facts. And one of the facts that science had discovered, and I love that science is catching up with God. I love that because it's constantly happening. And one of them was they were saying that they're finding out that laughter is 10 times more powerful uh, than morphine. Um, again, I just read that this morning. I don't have a joke for it. I just I thought that was awesome that God gave us laughter. You know, I mean, <laughs> I'm glad he also gave us morphine. Um, <laughs> Let's be honest. I mean, if I break my leg in half, I don't want my doctor standing over me going, knock, knock. <laughs> no, you quit screaming and say, who's there? This is, this is part of your HMO. So, <clears throat> so anyway, I put, <laughs> I just thought that was, I should share that with you. I thought it was cool. The rest of the flight was kind of okay, except for uh, we were about 10 minutes into the plane uh, taking off and I took my phone out, uh, which I have the iPhone, and uh, which, by the way, if you're thinking about getting it, get it. And I'm not being paid to say that. It does every... Even before they introduced me, I was a little nervous, so I was backstage using the deodorant app. And... <laughs> I like how some of you laughed and some of you were like, does it do that? <laughs> I've never seen one. I'm from Kokomo. So... <clears throat> Nobody's from Kokomo here, are they? No, oh, oh, seriously? Okay, sorry. I apologize. I, I will speak slower. Um, should have done my research. Um, but no, yeah, so anyway, I took my iPhone out and I was playing this game called Tap Tap. And I don't know if it was because the flight attendant was mad at me already because of the whole hee-hee thing, but he just he immediately came running down. And he was like, put your phone up. I'm not even supposed to be up now. I wanted to go, not supposed to be up. <laughs> It's like, you're not supposed to be out of that chocolate factory. So, <clears throat> I didn't say that to him. <laughs> I thought it. I'm a Christian. <laughs> but anyway, he yelled at me. He, this is what he told me. He goes, it's actually a federal offense. You cannot have your phone on whenever the plane is on. And I was like, I wasn't trying to argue, but I was like, why? And he goes, because if your phone is on, it'll mess with the instruments of the plane and it'll make the plane crash. I was like, you're telling me if my phone is on, the plane could crash. He was like, yeah, and I don't want to call somebody a liar, but honestly, if that was true, why would terrorists go to all the trouble to sneak a bomb on the plane? Like, <laughs> why wouldn't they just jump up in the middle of flight and be like, ah, la, 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 la. <laughs> I will now fling this angry bird. <laughs> and we will die like pigs. <laughs> like, what? So I put my phone, I actually looked it up. I got to the hotel uh, this, mor or this morning, yeah, and um, which again, I, I struggled whether to share this with you because I don't want to sound like I'm bragging, but I do love moments where you can be Christ-like to people and it makes a difference in their lives. Um, I got to the hotel, they didn't have my room ready and you could tell the girl thought I was going to yell at her and uh, it was kind of cool because I was like, no big deal. I'm a Christian, man. I got too much joy in my life, you know, and, and I'm not saying that to brag, but you could tell because I was Christ-like. Um, I said, I got stuff that I can do in the lobby, and I started doing it, and she immediately found a room um, for me. It was cool. I'm not bragging. I'm just saying. She came back, and she was like, I got a room for you. And so I put my toenail clippers up, and (Laughter) 
But I looked it up. I looked. It, it is a federal offense. Nobody's gone to jail, but he could have prosecuted because I had, you know, and I'm glad he didn't because I don't want to go to jail anyway. But how long am I going to last in jail going to jail for that? Like a big dude walking up going, what are you in for? I'll be like, oh, I'll tell you. I was sitting on an airplane and I had my phone out and I was playing tap tap. So you spread the word, nobody better mess with me or I'll get you tap tap. Like what? So all I have to say is I love comedy. It's such a blessing. So thank you guys for coming out. Um, I, I've been doing stand-up for a long time, but honestly, my favorite job is a, a nonprofit organization that my wife and I started 14 years ago <laughs> called Being a Parent. And um, <laughs> if you're not laughing, I know you're a parent. <laughs> But no, no, I'm kidding though, but it is a blessing. My wife and I, we have three tax deductions, all boys, and it, it really is a blessing. It, it, it actually was a blessing that we had one, because I don't know how much you guys know about me, but when we first got married, uh, we were actually told we couldn't have children by my mother-in-law. And um, <laughs> she thought she was in charge, because <laughs> we were living with her. And um, <laughs> with the first two we had in the hospital, the third one we did something different. Uh, uh, I, I don't know if it's popular here in Indiana, but in Texas I read this article that it was better to have the baby underwater. And so we did that. And man, <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> Oh, turns out not everybody at the YMCA had read that article. <laughs> That lifeguard was angry. <laughs> but with the first two, and even the first one, that, that is also the difficulty, because I try to be an adult when, I, when it's time to be an adult, but it's difficult being a comedian. Like the doctor got mad at me one time because he was trying to give us advice. He was like, if the baby's crying, it's because of three things. One, he's hungry. Two, he's tired. Or three, he has a dirty diaper. And I, I'm a comedian. I was like, shouldn't dirty diaper be number two? <laughs> He didn't even laugh. He just turned to my wife and gave her a pamphlet on single parenting. And I, <laughs> even the nurse got mad at me because she thought I was messing with her. But I honestly didn't know anything about kids. I didn't, you know, I didn't know anything. I, did, I definitely didn't know what they look like when they're born. I thought they were pink and cuddly like you see on TV. <laughs> they're goopy, man. <laughs> Why wouldn't you tell me that? I'm on the video going, okay, here it comes. It's a, it's a grub worm. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I was expecting pink and cuddly. My first son looked like a veggie tail dipped in motor oil. Just <laughs> the doctor didn't even help us. I thought he would come in and slowly talk us through because it was our first one. And, you know, he didn't. He just, I guess he was in a hurry. He burst in the room and started shouting out doctor terms. He's like, okay, I think we're ready. She's 80% of face. She's seven centimeters dilated. Her barometer pressure is 80 over 60. Expect a cool front to come in later this afternoon. <laughs> Followed by high gust of wind. <laughs> brought on by her mother and uh, <laughs> okay you can laugh at that <laughs> she's not here so i know she's not here she lives in galveston that's got to be at least like seven hours by broom so <laughs> Okay, it's probably faster, I don't know. Um, probably is faster. Last Christmas I got her a Nimbus 2000. So, uh, But we had the baby and I was so nervous about what kind of father I was going to be. And that's where the nurse got mad at me because she walked over and she goes, uh, you know kids can't blow their nose uh, when they're babies so you have to use this. And she handed me this, uh, this turkey baster bulb thing. <laughs> I'd never even seen it. I was like, what do you do? And she goes, you put your son, you know, down on like the changing table and then put this thing up in his nose and you go like that. And I was like, yeah, then what happens? His head caves in? I don't think so. Because doesn't that make sense? Like, <laughs> no. Now he's going to be a Democrat. So... <clears throat> Okay, right. I kind of thought I knew how that would go, but <laughs> anyway, wow, that went better than I thought. Um, in fact, I'm Bob Smiley and I approve this message. Um, 
And I normally don't make this many government jokes. I'm not a political comic. I don't know what's in the tonight. I, but I do want to say this because I never want to offend anybody. I don't care what uh, side you're on. If you're Republican, fine. If you're Democrat, you know what? <laughs> Hate the sin, not the sinner. So, <laughs> so I do. So now I have these three kids, and I'm trying to be this good dad. And you know, and my wife is an amazing mom. I cannot brag on her enough. She is a um, she's an amazing Christian. She's very smart. Um, she's almost a little too smart. I don't know if other husbands deal with this, but I don't, I don't enjoy arguing with her because I don't like <laughs> looking words up. Um, it's not even losing. It's like I have to go to Google to be able to talk. Like, you have no idea. She'll be like, your problem is you're too assiduous when dealing with contravention. You need to absolve and commute those wrongdoings and exonerate those around you. And I'm like, oh, I know you are, but what am I? <laughs> She is. She is so smart. She's so great. We, and we've been married 16 years, and it just gets better and better. Any, um, by the way, any newlyweds? Anybody just married? Newlyweds? Anybody? Um, <coughs> of course not. <laughs> Why would you leave the house? Um, <laughs> that was a dumb question. Because there's a lot of unpacking and organizing, I remember. Um, <coughs> No, but I like, to, I like to see, like, if newlyweds come to the show, I like to talk to them uh, at the show. Normally, I don't like to hang out with them because they're in that syrupy suite. Like, you know what I'm talking about? I, we're in a life group, which, by the way, I cannot applaud you guys enough for embracing life groups. Life groups are amazing, and we're in a great life group. I mean, it really does. I know some of you applaud because it, it's probably made a difference in your life, right? Like, honestly, it's so great. But we're in a life group, and um, we have a couple that's been married uh, two, they've been married for two months now. And this is what I'm talking about. They're syrupy sweet. There was one cookie left on the, the plate, and both of them reached for the cookie, and both of them said the exact same thing. And I was, happened to standing there, and uh, both of them, the woman and the <laughs> man, um, they both reached for the cookie, and they went, no, you take it. No, you, Jinx, you owe me a Coke. Cherry Coke, right? We love Cherry Coke, Bob. I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it was just too syrupy. The best part was while they were doing all that, my wife took the cookie. So, <laughs> it is. She is so amazing. I am so blessed. I actually met her at a Christian college. I don't know if we got single guys looking where to go. Go to a Christian college. Oh, it is easy to pick up girls. Uh, <laughs> no, because you can use Christian pickup lines like, excuse me, I believe your rib belongs to me. <laughs> so, I hope he's not writing that down. <laughs> that was worth 10 bucks. Um, anyway, but no, it, seriously, it was love at first sight when I met her. And, uh, you know, again, I, I, I'd never experienced love at first sight, but she was just walking across this field, and all of a sudden she just stopped. And she turned and looked at me. And not to get all mushy, but it had to be God in control, because I promise you, <laughs> I was totally hidden by the bushes. But... Um, <laughs> Love knows no boundaries. She looked right into my binoculars. And um, <laughs> and I walked up to her, and I didn't even know what to say. I just, you know, because I used to get so nervous around girls. I walked up to her, and I was like, you know, I, I, I thought, what do I say? And I thought, I'll just say, hi, you look nice, because how do you mess that up? You know, hi, you look nice. But I was way too nervous. Instead of, hi, you look nice, I was like, nice, you look high. <laughs> But she laughed, and, uh, and we did. We got married. It's so great. And you do. You learn something every single day. I think a lot of people kind of quit trying to be a better person every single day. But, you know, you, you do. It's amazing how much you learn. I learned a couple weeks ago not to uh, text my wife to bring me a cup of coffee <laughs> before I got out of bed that morning. Yeah. And I learned at the same time that evidently she <laughs> had been a sailor at some point because... <laughs> Those words I didn't have to look up. Um, <laughs> that's right. I went to public school. So <laughs> now I actually don't text her at all. And I asked her if I could share this, and um, she said I could. But this is why I don't text her. I was in California uh, last week, and I was doing a show, and I was in the lobby of the hotel, and I just texted her eight quick little texts to let her know I was caring about her. This is what I wrote to her: "Good morning, my love. How's the greatest woman in the world?" I ate too much for breakfast. I'm so miserably full, bloated and fat, totally disgusting. How's your mom doing? 
I know, I didn't mean anything by that. I'm just not good at segues. Anyway, how's your mom doing? And then I wrote, I got a sunburn yesterday at the festival. It was an outdoor festival, and I don't know if you've noticed, but um, I'm a redhead, so like, I don't tan. I burst into flames. Um, I can't even use regular sunscreen. I got to put on mayonnaise. Uh, <laughs> That is, in fact, that was my, I had two criterias for a wife. I, she had to be a Christian, and then she couldn't be another redhead, or if we had kids, they'd be transparent. So, <clears throat> that's going to be my question for God. I know everybody, like, thinks of questions they're going to ask God when they get to heaven. You know, like, you know, why'd you make fire ants? Or who shot JFK? Or Miley Cyrus, really? Um, <clears throat> Now, I, mean, I want to be like a pale, skinny redhead. That's, that's what you can't, you know. I almost feel like I was made on the sixth day and God like forgot to make me. And he was like, all right, that's everything. Oh, I didn't make Bob Smiley. <laughs> what do we have left over? You know, <laughs> I just picture angels flying in going, whoo, whoo. we found an albino and a clown wig. So, <laughs> perfect. Bring me a jar of freckles and I'll make him funny. So, <laughs> And being the redhead, I know every, like, every, like, because, I mean, everybody talks about racism. Ra- re- being a redhead, that's where you see racism, you know? I, I get so tired of people looking at me, trying to figure out how to get my pot of gold. Uh, <laughs> calling me slang words, like, what up, my ginger? Anyway, um, anyway, you're, by the way, I didn't write all that to her. I was just telling that to you. Um, this is what I wrote. I got a sunburn yesterday at the festival. It felt like I was a mile from the sun. Whoever thought a big ball of gas would make me so miserable? That's me just checking in with her, just letting her know. Okay, this is why I will never text her again. AT&T decided to send her half my text. Yeah, what is not what I said at the time, but is what I, this is what she got. Good morning, my love. How's the greatest woman in the world? Bloated and fat, totally disgusting. <laughs> your mom doing? Whoever thought a big ball of gas would make me so miserable? (laughs) But we got married. I was so blessed. My wife knew that I was was nervous around girls. And she is. She is so good about being a mom. Because even even trying to give advice to my kids, I I think that's why fathers say things that their father said to them. Because my dad used to say stuff to me that I promised I would never say to my kids. And I'm saying them now. You know, like, quit crying or I'll give you something to cry about. Or, you know, don't make me come up there. You know, hide in this box till company leaves. Or... (laughs) You know, it's so difficult being a dad. And especially, you, you know what helps being a dad is, you know, like being a macho dad. That carries authority, you know, or at least to have a voice that sounds like a man. Um... <clears throat> It's okay to laugh. I realize my voice is way too high to be like, you know, I, I'm not even going to be able to protect my kids. Like if you were a burglar breaking in downstairs in my house, would this scare you if I was at the top of stairs? Like, you better not be down there. <laughs> what is that? I'm the only guy that could stand at the top of the stairs and go, you better get out or I'll call my husband. Like what? <laughs> My dad had that, my dad, he still has this macho voice. And I mean, that's what I know about authority, this macho. My dad has a voice that would carry over the neighborhood. He would tell me to do something, other kids would do it. He'd be like, get out of that tree. Kids would be jumping out of trees. Like, <laughs> Here's the worst part is, and I'm just having to get used to this. My, I've got a 14-year-old boy. <laughs> His voice is deeper than mine. And it just happened... Like, I've never seen a kid go through puberty that quick. It was like in a matter of seconds. He was walking downstairs. He's like, hey, Dad, I'm hungry. Can I have some cereal? (laughs) What are you looking at? (laughs) I'm watching you grow that beard. So... (laughs) It is. I mean, isn't it weird? How many of you guys have kids? Like, is that something I can talk about a little bit? Okay, is it... Do you also find yourself saying the dumbest things, but it makes sense? You know what I'm talking about? Like, I actually had to say, wait a minute. Did he bite you before or after you sprayed him in the eye with cologne? Like, what? What kind of sentence is that? I had to say this. No. Chicken pot pie does not have pot in it. Like, what? I had to tell my eight-year-old, don't lick the dog. (laughs) That one kind of made sense because we have a chocolate lab and he loves chocolate. (laughs) 
But it is. It's being, I mean, and now that's why I get why my parents were always stressed out because my brother was terrible. Um, and we, no, it was. I was I was a good kid. I hear some like, I was. I never did anything bad. It's just bad stuff happened right around me. <laughs> I was, a, I had to be a good kid. I grew up in a very small town, so I was kind of like the spotlight kid, because um, my dad was my school superintendent, and, um, you know, and we, we, I grew up in a town with 281 people in it, so it was very small. We had nothing. We had a little school, and then we had a little, um, I guess it was a store. It was called a drive through tobacco barn. I don't even know what happened there. I guess rednecks just pulled up, and we're like, yeah, fill her up, please. <laughs> It was weird growing up. I mean, we still had, like, big city problems. We had, uh, you know, a gang that we had to deal with. We had one gang. They, they were called the East Side Milkers. They were all like, yo, 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 yo. And, <laughs> and I would get in trouble at school. And it wasn't because I was being bad. Honestly, I was just inquisitive. Like, I would get, you know, the rules to the fire. The teacher's like, in the event of a fire, walk, don't run. And I was like, uh, if there's a fire, <laughs> I'm running, Okay. <laughs> It's like, what do you want us to do? Walk down the hallway while flames lick around our body? <laughs> like, la, la, la. <laughs> Ow! Like, once he just said in the vent of a fire, walk single file. I'm like, yeah, that's a great idea. Let's form a human wick. Like, <laughs> with the fire to catch up, it was like, <laughs> <laughs> Another rule we had was uh, uh, last person out of the room had to shut all the windows. <laughs> Again, I was not trying to get smart aleck or get in trouble. I was like, okay, let me get this straight. If there ever is a fire, we're all standing outside watching the building burn, watching one kid frantically try to shut all the windows. <laughs> hey, there goes Jimmy. You can do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> what a shame. He almost made it to that last window, right? <laughs> I just, I wasn't, I just didn't get stuff the way that other kids got stuff, you know? I just, you know, and I think it's because God made me to do comedy, so I think it just, I had to get through that adolescent, you know. It was, first grade, my teacher said, class, you have to raise your hand to go to the bathroom. I was like, no, you don't, watch. <laughs> so I didn't date much. Um... <laughs> What's up with you three? Are you in time out up there? What did you do? Like, are you the three that don't tithe? You have to sit up there now? Okay, right. We, uh, so, um, yeah, so we, and, and I, grew up, I grew up with a loving family. Uh, my dad was very active in my life, uh, sometimes too active. I had a dad that loved pranks, and I, I love comedy. I don't like pranks, but my dad was all in it. My dad taught me how to play slug bug. You see a Volkswagen Beetle, you punch a person next to him, yeah. He taught me the rules, and then he drove me to a Volkswagen dealership. <laughs> he would do all sorts of... One time, and sometimes it would like, take me a while to get it. I thought I was his favorite, because for a year he would make a cake once a month, and he'd always let me lick the cake beaters. And uh, then, you know, finally years later I realized, you can turn them off first. So, <clears throat> for a year I was like, he loves me more. <laughs> One prank I didn't even get until I became an adult and started traveling doing stand-up. I was in uh, Florida, um, or not Florida, I was in uh, <laughs> uh, uh, Philadelphia. Um, sorry, I knew it was a state that started with an F. Um, <laughs> I am not good at geometry, so... <laughs> But no, it was, yeah, it was Philadelphia because they had bears and I was doing a youth retreat and they were like, we don't want to scare you, but we're staying in tents and there's bears here. Do you know what to do if you're attacked by a bear? And I was like, absolutely, because my dad used to always tell me right before he dropped me off in the woods when I was little. And he would, he'd say, you don't want bears to smell you, so you need to rub meat on your body. So... <laughs> That's not what they told me though. Like, and I, I'm interested, do you guys, what do you do if you're attacked by a bear? That's what they said. Okay, I don't want to call you out, but honestly, play dead. A bear's attacking you. Could anybody pull that off? A bear would be like, Aah! and you'd be like, oh. <laughs> Even if I could pull that off, the bear's bound to be like, <laughs> this dead guy just wet himself. So, <clears throat> I didn't sleep at all that night because I didn't know what to do. I was afraid I was going to be attacked by a bear. Every noise, I was on alert. And then that morning, I went down to the river to wash my face, and I went down, and um, I was attacked by an evil 
If you don't have these, you're going to think I've lost my mind, but I was attacked by an evil goose. Uh, <clears throat> it was a Canadian goose. Do you guys have Canadian gooses here? Okay. All right. You know what I'm talking about? They got the big long neck and the big furry hat with the chin strap. And uh, <clears throat> they don't even honk right. Geese are supposed to be like honk. This one was like honk, eh? So <clears throat> it came out of nowhere. It bit me. I went running back into camp. There's like 400 kids who thought I was cool because I did stand up the night before. I lost all that respect because I was like, ah. And they were like, what is it? Is it a mountain lion? Is it a bear? Is it Edward Cullen? What is it? I was like, no, it's a... <laughs> Goose! <laughs> I was like, no, they laughed too. I was like, don't laugh. It came out of nowhere. There was no warning. I thought at least I would see a duck and then a duck and then a... <laughs> Everybody get it that's going to get it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no child left behind. <laughs> But no, my dad really would, he would pull pranks on me. And sometimes, I, sometimes my brother would even help me because he felt bad uh, for it. My dad, for uh, about two years, and I thought it was because I was a pretty bold Christian growing up, but my dad would uh, have me take communion every single night. And I thought that was because uh, I was a Christian. And finally, my brother was like, dude, <laughs> he's just giving you NyQuil. So, <clears throat> oh. I totally busted him. I was like, what about the bread? And he's like, the bread. Oh, yeah, you know what? We're supposed to double up on the juice because God knows our heart. So, and I, and I kind of got why he would do some stuff like that. Because, again, you know, it wasn't that I was a troublemaker kid, but I, I was really um, active a lot. And we, I'll give you an example. One time my parents took me and my brother to the, um, the, uh, the Kitty Casino, the place where kids gamble. Yeah, I know you have them. Chuck E. Cheese, yes. <laughs> You know that's a casino for children, right? You got to go through a turnstile. There's no clocks on the wall. There's a six-foot mafia rat walking around handing out tokens. I had a lady come up after the show one time, and she was mad about that. And she was also mad because um, I'd ask how you discipline your kids. And because we were just about to have our first one, because uh, we were interested, because we had heard Time Out was now the new way to go. And we were going to do Time Out, but we got the James Dobson Strong Will Child book. And... You know, that helped us because it was thick enough that when we spanked him, um, <clears throat> that was the joke she got mad about. <laughs> um, she came up and she's like, you're advocating child abuse. You should never spank your children. I'm like, you're a Christian. Have you read Proverbs where they talk about it? She was like, that was different. That was the Old Testament. They didn't have time out back then. And I was like, what? It's like, yeah, they did. What was the lion's den? Huh? <laughs> All I know is spankings worked on me. I mean, I, it's, it's individual. I'm totally fine with the other. But I mean, spank, there were times, one time I was down front and my dad was leading singing. And again, not trying to be a troublemaker, but my dad was like, on this next song, let's stand to our feet. And I don't know why I did this, but I was like, yeah, everybody, let's stand to our feet. Good thing he said that. I almost stood to my liver. <laughs> we never sang that song. <laughs> My dad shut the book. He walked right down. He picked me up. I was actually sitting where that kid is right there. He picked me up. He carried me outside like a football. And uh, and I deserved a spanking, but it was so embarrassing because it's right in front of my wife. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, my parents took me and my brother to uh, Chuck E. Cheese. And, we, and also my best friend, uh, Clay, was with us, uh, which is weird because we grew up in this farming town, uh, and uh, Clay was goth. And it was kind of when goth was just, you know what I'm talking about when I say goth, like have all the face piercings, the eyebrow, and it looked like he fell face first into a tackle box. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> 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 he was also the first kid I ever saw wear baggy pants, and I love baggy pants, and I know a lot of adults are against it, but man, before baggy pants, I got a friend that is a police officer, and he can catch thugs and gang members so much quicker now. <laughs> Because they can't run from the cops because their belt is here. They're like, ah, oh, it's the cops. Hurry, waddle, waddle as fast as you can. I'm like, I'm like, why don't they just hide in their pants? Like, oh, it's the cops. <laughs> <laughs> pants on the ground, pants on the... Anyway... Anyway, they took us to the, uh, uh, the Chuck E. Cheese, and they dropped us off, and I'd done really well at the skee-ball table that night. I left 200 tickets up, and 
Well, now we know who gambles. So, <laughs> yo, 11. Um, so when I cashed out, I got one of those rubber sticky hand things, which I love. And so I got in the back seat. And uh, again, my dad was always looking for any kind of prank to see what I would do. And I honestly think that because he realized that my brain was a little bit off for most people, that he wanted, he was always testing to see what I'd do, you know. Sometimes it would backfire. One time he told me we were too poor to afford a dog because we were very poor, uh, growing up very poor. I had to wear hand-me-downs from my younger brother. Um, <laughs> yeah, I did not look good in capris. Um, <laughs> but my dad told me, he goes, we're, he said, we're too poor to afford a dog, so if a burglar breaks in, you have to bark at him. And <clears throat> that's the one that backfired on him. It happened my freshman year in high school. Happened in the middle of the night. This, this kid that used to be, uh, goes to my dad's school where he was a superintendent, broke in our house, you know. And to be honest, I was, I was scared to death. I was laying in bed. I was like, I'm a freshman. What am I going to do? I'm only 18. So, <clears throat> <laughs> so judgmental up here. Okay, anyway, I was laying in bed. I didn't even know what to do. I just threw the covers off. This guy was in our living room unplugging our TV. I didn't have a game plan. I just ran in and went. <laughs> It worked. <laughs> you got to do it. It was awesome. He just froze. <laughs> then he let me smell his hand. <laughs> my dad was so proud of me. He came over and he, <laughs> he rubbed my belly. And I, <laughs> so anyway, so I, I had to set that up so you know kind of what my dad's like. So I got in the back seat of the car and we pulled out and my dad... Um, leaned over and he turned on this country music station. Now, I'm not against country music, okay? Um, I actually wrote a country music song that I think is going to be really good. It's called, um, If I Can't Be Number One in Your Heart, Then <laughs> Number Two on You. Uh, <clears throat> it's going to be a hit. I'm going to be a rock star. Just I need to learn how to stick my tongue out and twerk, and I am set. Um, <laughs> That's <laughs> the dumbest thing. Um, but anyway, I got in the back seat, and, but I know my dad turned this country music station on because it played this mindless, like twang, like, you know, I'm talking about like, lang, 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 you know, like whatever. <laughs> and so, you know, so what happened was we pulled out, well, he turned it on right as we got out of the parking lot. Well, my dad always had the rule not to talk to him while he was driving. And again, I really don't have a joke for this, but I want kids to hear this. I obeyed my parents, and it saved me from a lot of problems that my friends got into because they didn't obey their parents. And so my dad had that rule, you don't talk to him, because my dad has road rage. Um, he does. He has, I, and I shouldn't laugh, because I'm, I'm a worse driver than him. Uh, I've been in two wrecks this year. Um, one, I hit the, uh, uh, what's the big vehicle where if you hit it, everybody gets mad at you? Not a school bus, come on. <laughs> A school bus, although in high school I had to ride the school bus and ugh, I hated that little thing. Um, <clears throat> now, what's the, the vehicle where if you hit, everybody gets um, the, uh, no, oh, uh, <laughs> a hearse. Um, <clears throat> they were angry. They all jumped out of their cars. I was like, everybody calm down. <laughs> I didn't kill him. So... <clears throat> So anyway, so my dad does, he, he gets mad and it's kind of funny when my dad gets mad and I'm kind of proud of him for this because he used to have a problem uh, using swear words. And so when he became a Christian, he stopped doing that, which I'm very proud of him for that. But he uses substitution words. So it is kind of funny when he gets into a, <laughs> one time he slammed his hand in a car door because he uses words from the Old Testament is basically what he does. So one time he slammed his hand in a car door and he's like, ow, ow, Shadrach. Oh, so Son of a bed and a go. Oh. <laughs> so read your Bible, children. Um, <laughs> but so we're on the road, and I know the rule, but I know he's playing this song to get on my nerves. So I'm sitting in the back, and I'm like, oh, this is terrible. This is horrible. I, I wish I could say something. I wish there was something I could do. I went, hey. And I had a rubber sticky hand thing. So I thought to myself, I bet you... <laughs> I can sling that between my mom and my dad <laughs> and hit a radio button and change the channel, all right? You gotta admit that's pretty smart. So I immediately prayed about it. <laughs> you always pray before you do any kind of mission work. So 
I didn't know if it would work or not, but all of a sudden I was like, <laughs> like that, and the hand went straight between my mom and my dad. Not only did it hit a radio button, it hit channel number two, which was a rock channel, out of Dallas, Texas, 97.1, the Eagle. So we're driving down the road. My dad didn't know I had this hand thing. All of a sudden the radio changes from lang, 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 to welcome to the jungle. My dad was like, ah! <laughs> but in the guy's voice. Uh, <clears throat> my parents were wigging out because my parents are very conservative church people and I love that about them, but when they didn't know I had this hand thing. So when they thought, my dad actually later told me when the radio started wigging out with that other song, he thought <laughs> Satan had possessed his radio. <laughs> And when my ultra-conservative Christian parents thought that Satan had possessed the radio, they started doing things I'd never seen before. My dad started laying hands on the radio, and my mom tried to talk in tongues, which you could tell she was totally faking, because she was like, ah, about a Mazda, shit about a Honda. And I was like, what? So I was like, boom, boom, back in my hand, back in my pocket. My dad finally grabs the steering wheel. I'm like, oh, I got it. He was like, what happened? Which meant I got away with it. I was like, yes. And my brother was like, he did it. <laughs> Shadrach. So <clears throat> my dad didn't even ask me what I did. He just looked in the rearview mirror and he goes, I don't even care what you did. That was super dangerous. Don't you ever, ever, ever do it again. And again, I always obeyed my parents. So when he said, don't do it again, I was not planning on doing it again. <laughs> But a Billy Ray Cyrus song came on right then. Yeah, I think even on Judgment Day, God's going to go, yeah, I totally understand why you didn't want your achy, breaky head to hear that song. <clears throat> so I took out the rubber sticky hand thing, and I was like, i got to try this again. So all of a sudden, I was like, <clears throat> like that. That hand was going straight back between my mom and my dad. It was going right back up to channel number two. I was like, here we go again. <laughs> it didn't happen again, though, because my brother thought it'd be funny to bump my arm right as the hand got by my dad's face. So, and let's recap. My dad does not know I have this hand thing. So all he knows is a big gooey hand has reached out of the seat and grabbed him. Which would scare you if you thought Satan had just possessed your radio. <laughs> He starts screaming, a demon's got me, a demon's got me. He grabs the hand, he throws it up against the windshield. It splats up huge. He's like, oh my goodness. He rolls down the window, grabs it, throws it out. I scare him even more by going, my hand. <laughs> I remember thinking, it can't get worse than this. My brother turned around and goes, that is so funny. That landed right in the center of that cop's windshield. <laughs> So that's what I mean, dumb stuff. I mean, <laughs> dumb stuff, again, this is not part of my act. This just happened last week, and I thought it, I, I thought it was, no, 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 not that story. Um, I don't know if you guys, I mean, I'm about to tell you what happened, but um, weird stuff happens. I was, I was at a show, and I was in my green room, and there was a big white box up on the green room uh, wall, and I got a chair and peered right up into it because I did not know what an automatic room deodorizer was. <laughs> I've just peered right up, which evidently it's motion censored. <laughs> I was like, what is this? <laughs> I had to go out on a church, do an hour stand-up show with one eye totally clear. The other one looked like it's stoned out of its mind. And I'm like, hey, he's having a good time. I'm like, what? I do weird stuff like that happens all the time. I started to tell you this story because um, my wife, the reason why she was fine with it, because she had heard on campus that I always said the wrong thing to girls, because it even happened when I was younger. Uh, in fact, uh, yeah, I got time to, I'll tell you this really quick. But my most embarrassing moment in my entire life happened when I was in eighth grade. I was at our church, and I was standing next to this girl named Christy, who I had a huge crush on and I never even talked to her before and I was like oh I wasn't even looking at her and all of a sudden the preacher did this horrible thing he goes let's all pray bow your heads and take the person's hand next to you 
Yeah, if you've ever been in eighth grade, because by the way, I wasn't this muscular when I was in eighth grade, okay? Yeah, I look like I went to a blood bank and forgot to say when. <clears throat> Plus, my ears were this big. Can you guys in the back, can you, <laughs> can you feel the breeze? <laughs> I was already self-conscious. Take the person's hand next to you. If you've ever been an eighth grade boy, you probably know what happened. My hand didn't start sweating. It started raining out. <laughs> Little clouds formed around the knuckles. My face didn't even just start breaking out. All of a sudden, pimples just went Brrr. I put my hand in her hand. It slips out, which is horrible. So what do you do to fix that? You squeeze her hand tightly, right? No. Never take a sweaty hand and squeeze another hand in a quiet church building. <laughs> oh, yeah. It was dead quiet. I was so nervous. And all of a sudden, you just hear... <laughs> and to this day, I have no idea why I said this, but I totally said the worst. I was like... That was a loud one. <laughs> Okay, on to the embarrassing part. <laughs> so I'm holding her hand, and I actually thought something I've never thought before this or after this. I thought, make it a quick prayer, which is crazy, because I know most of you don't know me, but to me, prayer is the best gift that God has given us besides His Son. I mean, think about it. We get a relationship with God. We can talk. God doesn't even care if you pray to Him until you fall asleep at night. Like, that, you know, I, di I didn't come to preach at you, but to me, that's amazing. Because honestly, if I was God, I'd get mad at that. I'd be like, uh, did He just fall asleep? <laughs> He can't stay awake long enough to talk to the creator. Boy, I bet a little Charlie horse would wake him up. <laughs> I know I'm not the only one in this room that would do I would get mad. I would. I'd come through the ceiling. I'd be like, <laughs> Tonight the bed bugs will bite. <laughs> like, I do. I love prayer. I mean, prayer is... And I love when people realize that it's a relationship. You get to talk to the Creator. Some people waste that. I was at a... I, I shouldn't say it because you can probably look it up, but I was at a church um, a month ago. And um, <laughs> it was last week. Um, but I was at a church and this guy got up and you could tell he was trying to impress people. So he wasn't even praying to, to, to talk to God. He was trying... And I love it because it backfired on him. He was like, God, as it says in your word... With great power comes great responsibility. <laughs> I didn't even let him off the hook. I was like, hang on, is that in first or second Spider-Man? I can't. <laughs> and if you didn't laugh till I said Spider-Man, you are not reading your Bible. Let's just call it what it is. Because that was another thing that, that helped me in my Christian walk as, an early, as a kid. Because my grandmother told me, you need to read the Bible when you're young. In fact, she said it makes me mad that young kids never read the Bible and elderly people are reading the Bible like crazy because, you know, it's like they're trying to cram for a final. So, <clears throat> so, so even when I was a kid, I mean, honestly, who works in child care here? Anybody work in child care? Okay, is it not the coolest to hear kids pray? Like, is that not the most beautiful? My, to this day, my favorite prayer is my oldest son, the day before he started kindergarten, um, he, we made him go to bed early. He was a little mad about that. Um, but he was praying to God, and you could tell he was talking. It was a relationship prayer. And I was so, I'll tell you, what, this is what it was. He was so cute. He was like, hey, God. Can we pray for angels to come down and protect us? So he's like, hey, God. It's Coulter Smiley. <laughs> You're probably wondering what you're doing praying this early in the day. <laughs> Yeah, I don't get that either, God, but my dad's making me go to bed, so if you'll go get those angels, they're probably, they're probably still playing basketball or baseball because there's so much daylight left. But we need them to come protect us because we all know my dad's voice isn't scaring away any burglars. <laughs> so I do, I love prayer. It's the most amazing thing. You know, there's only been one prayer that I've ever led that... Um, it backfired on me, and, it wasn't, and I, was, I was excited about the prayer. Um, uh, what happened was two years ago, we had to change churches. Um, <laughs> that doesn't matter. Um, 
I don't know why I told you that. Anyway, uh, <laughs> yeah, I know, like legally I can't. Anyway, the point is... <clears throat> We had to change churches, and uh, so we found a church that we liked, and so the week that we were going to place membership, we were late, so we had to sit down front where the empty seats were, and you know that's true, and the preacher recognized me because, you know, I'm hugely famous, and I am famous, and the worst part is I'm always (laughs) having to tell everyone. Uh, Even my wife tries to act like I'm not fan. I was actually noticed by eight different people in one day. And I was like, huh? And she was like, yeah, we're at a family reunion. So, <clears throat> Anyway, he recognized me. <clears throat> he recognized me. And he was like, we have comedian Bob Smiley here. He didn't know we were about to place membership. And so he just saw me. And he goes, well, we're gonna, I'm going to ask him if he would come up and lead the prayer. And uh, I, this is how much I love prayer. I honestly thought to myself, I wish he wouldn't have said comedian because I don't want people to think that uh, I'm going to try to make them laugh during the prayer. That's how much I love prayer. Uh, you know, it turned out I didn't have to worry about that because God had already decided, oh, yes, you are going to make them laugh. <laughs> it was horrible. We were about to place membership. I got it. And I honestly think it was God because never before in my life had a fly flown right into my throat. <laughs> that had to be God. I was up there. I was like, God, you are awesome. You are amazing. You are... <laughs> This kid was down front. He was like, oh, he's possessed. (laughs) I don't know why I told you that. (laughs) Oh, so I'm in eighth grade and I'm holding her hand. Medication's working. So, <laughs> right, you with me? I'm holding her. I'm holding her hand. Eighth grade, Chrissy and I. Oh, I got on prayer because I said make it a quick prayer, and I'd never said that before. And it wasn't a quick prayer. It was an old school preacher. So he was like, God, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning. And I was like, you better end it. You better end it now, or I'm going to flood this church with my hand. <laughs> So I understand this is my most embarrassing moment in my entire life. I'm kind of regretting I'm about to tell you this, but here we go. I'm holding her hand. Halfway through the prayer, I realize, even though my eyes are closed, that the guy standing next to me hadn't taken my hand. I don't know why it bothered me so much, but I'm like, why wouldn't he take my hand? It's the dry one. So <clears throat> here it goes. Halfway through the prayer, I totally snapped. Oh, my gosh. I still feel bad about this. I was like, dude, take my hand. <laughs> this is why I felt bad. He was missing an arm. <laughs> Worst moment of my life. How do you recover? I was like, dude, take my hand. Oh, I am a loser, Lord. (laughs) He later became my best friend. He was not offended. He was so cool with it. He thought it was funny. He actually said something really funny because obviously I felt horrible. I was like, I don't even know what to say. And he was like, dude, I totally understand. I know I've been in that situation before. I know you like Christy. I was like, you've been in that situation before? What'd you do? And he goes, dude, I cut my arm off. (laughs) So I love that. I love that stuff. And, but I love that you never know what life is going to give you, you know. And, you know, at some point, you, you kind of realize that we're all different, but we're all, you know, sometimes we're all the same. You know, that's why I love talking about cell phones, because I do know that we're all kind of spies at heart, right? Because if somebody pocket dials you and leaves you a long message, you delete it right away? No, you don't. You listen to the whole thing, don't you? <laughs> Surely my wife's not the My wife is a total detective. She'll be like, shh. I'm listening. Cece's in the car. I'm like, shh, you be quiet. Put that down. She's like, shh, I'm not bothering him. He can keep preaching. You know, <clears throat> like, <laughs> it is. It's so amazing. And so, you know, like, I, even though sometimes I feel like a goofy dad, it is so amazing that, that, that God has created us with individual um, uh, talents. And that's what I'm getting to is like, that's why I wanted to be a part of this because that's the great thing about life group is because you have this, this core group that comes together and we all have different individual talents that we can come together and, and, and bond together and we can pray about each other. You know, prayer is such a powerful thing and we do most of our praying in our life groups. And so, you know, again, I've got a couple more stories for you, but I just, I really 
hope that you guys will, will join us over there and, um, and, you know, sign up for a life group. Get invested in people's lives and have people invest in yours. And, you know, like you said, I, I have merchandise and funny t-shirts and stuff. I'm not saying that so you'll go and <laughs> support my three children at home. Uh, <coughs> WWJD. Um, <coughs> But it is, but, f- but from the very beginning, whenever we started having kids, like my, my perspective on, on life changed, you know, because honestly, it changed like in seconds. Because my wife went into labor at 5.30 in the morning, and she jumped up and ran for the car. And I had one job to do. I was supposed to call the hospital and tell them we were coming, but they, they threw me for a, a loop because they asked a weird question. I was like, we're bringing Wendy Smiley. She's going to have a baby. She's going to have a baby. And they were like, calm down. Is this her first baby? And I was like, no, this is her husband. <laughs> But from the moment I became a dad, I got, I got to see more and more glimpses of, of God. In fact, I'll, uh, I'll close with a story. Uh, I, I love talking about how amazing God is, you know, and he, uh, he, he has created a goofy world. And I, I lo- that's why I, when embarrassing things happen. Here's another thing. You guys know who Tim Hawkins is? Um, yeah. He, he's my best friend. We, I actually have a DVD that I did, uh, we did together that I have out there. But um, again, this isn't a bit, but this, is what, this happened two weeks ago. I saw him at the Chicago airport. And it was uh, 5.30 in the morning, and he was getting off the plane. And so I figured he took a red eye. He looked really tired. He was walking slow. He was wearing yoga pants. And, um, <laughs> he, and so he's my best friend. So when you see your best friend, uh, guys uh, do this one thing. We <laughs> jump out and scare him. And, yeah, he was walking. He had his head down. And he has this bit about Snickerloaf. And uh, it's, it's just a, a joke that he has. And so I, <laughs> 5.30 in the morning, I jumped in front of him. And I go, <gasps> want to buy a Snickerloaf? <laughs> And that's when I realized it wasn't him. <laughs> Total true story. What about Snickerloaf? And then what I should have said was, oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were somebody else. Like, that would make sense. Like, you know, like he would be going, oh, okay, that's, that happens all the time. Like, what? What I said was, what about Snickerloaf? And I thought, oh, that's not him. I went, well, I already ate it. <laughs> Now, I was embarrassed, but I felt more bad for him because you know nobody's going to believe him. <laughs> He's going to be telling his friends, no, no, like at 5.30 in the morning, I got off the plane and an oversized Girl Scout jumped in front of me. <laughs> What is a snickle loaf? You know, right? So I do. I love it. I, I love that God has created joy and laughter. But the, I honestly think the greatest gift, besides prayer, is is just how much He loves us, and He proved that with the sacrifice of the cross. And this, this is my last story. Um, but and, and by the way, I, it'd be great if you guys would add me on Facebook because I need friends. Um, I know I shouldn't do this, but I, backstage I got an email from one of my family members bragging, going, "Ha ha! You're supposed to be famous, but I got more Facebook friends than you." And I, it's like, big deal, grandmother. So, <clears throat> anyway, I got this great glimpse of how much God loves us. Uh, last year, my oldest son came to me and he was like, Dad, I want to I play in the band. And I was actually elated because my wife's all into sports and she's in a fantasy football league and I'm in a fantasy marching band. And <clears throat> Yeah, in fact, that was kind of discouraging because after we dated for a couple months, I wanted to be uh, her husband. And so I asked her, I said, tell me all the things you are looking for in a husband. She didn't even know I was about to propose, but I was getting the list together. And so she gave me the list. Yeah, she got that answer wrong. She was like, I like macho men. I'm like, awesome. So she's all in the sports, but my son came and he goes, I want to play in the band. I was like, cool. And he goes, that's my dream. And I was like, you follow your dream. He goes, I want to play the trombone. I'm like, let's examine that dream. Because <clears throat> I don't know if you've heard a 13-year-old kid play the trombone or what I now call Satan's harp. But <clears throat> I wanted him to learn the guitar because you can use the guitar later in life. Because, you know, nothing against trombone players, but you hardly ever see an adult with a trombone. Anybody ever been out camping, sitting around a campfire? Just, oh so peaceful. Hey, Ricky, did you bring your trombone? (laughs) I've seen friends of mine play the guitar until their kids fall asleep. How messed up are my grandkids with my son standing over the crib going, hey. 
But he wanted a, a trombone, so I bought him a trombone. By the way, twelve hundred dollars, twelve hundred. Not advocating it, but that's why people cuss. So <laughs> I bought him this trombone. He went to school for about a week. He practiced and he learned a. I'm gonna call it a song. <laughs> if it was a song, honestly, it should have been called "Who Punched the Moose in the Bladder?" Because oh. <laughs> <laughs> Even our dog was like, dude, you make me go outside when I make noise like that. <laughs> we have a retired drug sniffing dog. We adopted a retired drug sniffing dog. And honestly, if you get a chance to do that, don't do that either. I didn't think it through. We have a dog living in our house that spent its entire life sniffing drugs. And... <laughs> He doesn't even hide it. He lets his fur grow all shaggy. <laughs> he wears a tie-dye collar. <laughs> he won't even bark right. He's all like, rough, man. <laughs> uh, he voted for Obama. Um, <clears throat> That is not a dig at Obama. That is honestly not a dig. He actually legally was able to. Acorn registered him. So... <clears throat> The point is, he was playing this song, and I'm just going to be honest, ugh, it was not good. It really was, I didn't even recognize it. Later he told me it was the theme music to Jaws, and I was like, well that was scarier than the movie. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't even say that, because here's the moment, here's the glimpse that I got about how much God loves us. He was playing the song, and it was not good. And I have never loved a song more, because my son was playing a song for me. And it was such a cool moment. I got this glimpse of that's the way God looks at us. You know what? It, maybe you're not playing the song of life the way that God created you to play. Maybe you're making a few mistakes. Doesn't matter. He's never going to stop loving you. He loves you unconditionally. And especially when you get in a great life group and it all bonds together where you're encouraging one another. You get to just see what true love is. And I got that moment. It was kind of cool. It was kind of, uh, this is kind of weird. Um, I don't cry uh, at all. And it's not a macho thing at all. I, I just, for some reason, I don't cry. I've cried one time as an adult, uh, and it was over the dumbest thing. It was over a movie. Uh, yeah, Toy Story 3. <laughs> Anybody cry at that? Everybody? Okay, all right, you cried? All right, come to my table and tell me the part you cried at. I want to know if it's the same part. Um, and I'll just tell the rest of you because I don't know how many people are going to go hang out. But um, uh, the part, I, if you saw the movie, um, the part I cried at was... Um, part I cried out was when the lady said, that'll be $87 for five tickets for your family to go in. And, um, <laughs> why is it so expensive to go to the movies? Is that not, anybody else here make popcorn at home and then sneak it in? Be honest. Yes. And then sell it to other people. <laughs> But it was such a great moment because I was just sitting there just saying, wow, I got a little glimpse of how much God loves us and how unconditional it is. And then my, my kid stopped playing. He looked at me. He goes, what are you thinking? I was, and I told him that. I said, you know what? I love you so much. Um, but more importantly, we're so lucky to have a God that loves us unconditionally. And I'm glad that you know about him and that I know about him. And you could tell he, he got, it was just a great father-son moment. And he put down his trombone for a second. And he looked at me. He goes, I love you. Guess what? And I was like, what? And he goes, <laughs> We learned two songs. <laughs> you want me to play the other one? And I was like, do I want you to play it? <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, I do, but it is late. It is time for you to take your communion. So... <clears throat> So I hope you've had fun tonight, but more importantly, I hope you find what true joy is, and that is finding out that God loves us unconditionally. So no matter what's going on, I hope you guys go out of this door knowing that God loves you, this church loves you, and whatever life group you guys get in is going to love you, man. I hope you guys had fun. You guys have been great. God bless.
Wow, what a night, huh? Enjoy it? Yeah, I did too. Sort of. All of it. I'm not as funny as he is, I promise. But uh, listen, I, I just want to just want to remind you that uh, we'll be, uh, there'll be a chance to meet Bob over in the gym. There'll be some refreshments over there, as well as information about uh, different life groups that are here. Uh, and I uh, want to let you know about just a couple other things. First is that if you're interested in purchasing tickets for the, the Guy Penrod concert that will be happening here on October 10th, those will be for sale at a table that says Boundless on it. The second thing I want to mention is that the next community event uh, that's going to be happening here at, it, during the Christmas season will be on December 7th and 8th. It's called Jingle Jam. And uh, last year, yeah, last year we did it for the first time. This place was packed out with people from all across the community. Just a great time to be together and to begin the Christmas celebration. I want you to, to make note of that. It's a great time for families. Uh, please know that's come. Thanks for coming tonight. Thanks for laughing with us. Hope you'll have a chance to connect over in the gym. Good night.